After the liberation of Korea in 1945, an authoritarian, anti-communist government was established. The Korean War occurred between 1950 and 1953 and left the Republic of Korea economically devastated. What little of the country's infrastructure the Japanese built during the occupation was mostly destroyed. Korean per capita income was less than Haiti, Ethiopia, and Yemen. The spring of 1960 saw a student movement for democracy. The Korean DMZ conflict, or Second Korean War, occurred between 1966 to 1969. This involved a series of low-level conflicts on the DMZ, resulting in less than 1,000 deaths, no territorial changes, and North Korea's failure to ignite an insurgency in South Korea. In conjunction with the United States becoming increasingly tied up in Vietnam, the Republic of Korea increasingly feared armed invasion by North Korea. North Korea had built an enormous army, which was being fueled, supplied, and further enlarged and armed by its vast, heavy industry sector. North Korea was a highly centralized and planned economy with the primary purpose of supplying its army with equipment. Given what was perceived to be an, increasingly, an increasing military threat of North Korea and America's distraction from the Korean Peninsula and other theaters, South Korea concluded that it needed to build heavy industry. However, in reality, the North Korean economic and industrial engine were actually slowing in the late 1960s. It was heavily reliant on the Soviet Union, which was experiencing its own slowdown in economic issues. The North Korean obsession with heavy industry led it to neglect its agricultural sector, leading to food shortages. Uh, presented with these issues, the North Koreans doubled down on centralization and heavy industry. The purpose of the heavy chemical industry drive in the 1960s would be to rapidly industrialize and diversify the Korean economy with a focus on exports that would do well in international markets. The Korean focus on heavy industry would include steel, petrochemicals, automobiles, machine tools, shipbuilding, and electronics. We will discuss several policies the Korean government passed, many in the middle of the 1960s. Most Korean heavy and chemical industries would face similar issues with lack of technology and inadequate domestic suppliers of parts and components. As early as 1965, Korea was identified as having cheap labor which could produce cost-competitive industrial exports. Advertisements were taken out to highlight Korea's relatively low wages. The government went to great lengths to attract foreign capital to supplement domestic capital investment. In Korea, there are large family-owned conglomerates that control large pieces of the economy even today. The heavy chemical industry drive would come at severe costs, including political and social turmoil, including widespread strikes by workers and students, and the eventual, eventual assassination of Park Chung-hee. In addition, it was um, important to keep the price of agricultural products down to reduce costs of food for manufacturing workers. Increasingly, Korea would have to go to international markets to purchase food products. Korea's success in manufacturing would result in higher wages that would make poor Southeast Asian countries more attractive and ultimately lead Korea to pursue high technical and skilled industries. There are some academics that can contribute a large part of that Korean economic miracle to investment, domestic but more importantly foreign. The Pacific Asian theater was becoming increasingly important in the late 20th century. Korea enjoyed not only American support and investment, but that of America's allies like Japan. Previously, Korea's import and export sector were dominated by Japanese companies. Park Chung-hee enlisted the help of Che Balls, who had vast reserves of capital to invest in the heavy chemical industry drive. In addition, Korean banks began to extend virtually interest-free loans to firms related to the drive. Investment is a key part of the success of Korea from the 1960s onwards in the following decades. Steel. Steel would be the basis of the heavy chemical industry drive. It was a resource that other sectors would use as an input. There was increased demand for steel both domestically within Korea and internationally in the 1960s. The Korean government recognized the importance of steel for an industrial nation that manufactured exports and implemented policies aimed at promoting the growth of the steel industry. Pohang Iron and Steel Company, POSCO, POSCO, 
was a government-established, state-run steel company founded in 1968. It would become one of the world's largest steel producers. In addition to POSCO, there were several important private steel companies that would help establish Korea as a major player in the international steel industry. Petrochemicals. The Korean government sought to establish and develop domestic oil refining and petrochemical production in the 1960s through state-run petrochemical companies including <clears throat> Korea National Oil Corporation and Korea Petrochemical Industry Corporation. <clears throat> The first oil shock, a period of economic disruption involving an Arab embargo related to Israel's Yom Kippur War, gave uh, Korean petrochemical companies a significant increase in demand for their products. The Korean government compounded this international demand with drives and policies to promote Korean petrochemicals. Machine tools. Machine tools are machinery used in the manufacturing process of other machines. They are basically machines that produce other machines. Machine tools are essential for efficient manufacturing, and a domestic machine tool industry is a strategic resource that can fuel other industries. An over-reliance on importing machine tools makes countries vulnerable to supply disruptions and geopolitical turmoil. In 1969, the Korean government established the Korean Machine Industry Promotion Association to help fuel domestic machine tool manufacturing. In addition, government policy included long-term loans with subsidized interest rates, import prohibitions on machine tools that could be produced domestically, and government financial assistance to purchase Korean machine tools. Korean companies were expected to export as a condition of receiving government help and support. Several Korean companies were established and began to gain traction in the mid to late 1970s. Korea would face challenges related to more advanced competitors technologically in the United States and Japan. Shipbuilding Korea's shipbuilding industry would begin with small ships for fishing and cargo transport. Later, Korean shipbuilding would advance to more complicated ships like oil tankers, freight ships, steamers, and drill ships. In 1965, Korea established the Shipbuilding Industry Promotion Policy, which provided various incentives for domestic manufacturing of ships. In 1972, Hyundai Heavy Industries was established. Other Korean shipbuilders included Daewo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering and Samsung Heavy Industries. By the early 1980s, Korea would be second only to Japan in regard to outstanding orders by gross tons. Automotives in 1965, Korea established the Korea Automotive Industry Promotion Policy. By 1965, Korea was experiencing strong growth. The government of Korea believed a strong automotive sector could contribute to that growth. The policy included tax exemptions and subsidies to encourage domestic production and export of automobiles. Initial issues facing the industry included a lack of domestic suppliers and limited technological cap cap capabilities. Government support was crucial in overcoming these barriers and becoming a self-sufficient industry. Self-sufficiency would mean domestic manufacturers and suppliers of automobile parts, as well as Korean research and development within the country. Hyundai Motor Company was established in 1967. In 1975, uh, the first passenger car the company produced, the Pony, began production. Kia Motors and Daewoo Motors would follow shortly after Hyundai. These companies sought to export automobiles to the Middle East and South America in the late 1970s, establishing, establishing Korea as a player in the international automobile industry. There was significant investment in research and development, which resulted in higher quality vehicles. The success in the 1960s and the 1970s would lay the foundation for Korean excellence in automobile manufacturing for decades to follow. Even today, many vehicles on the road are Korean brands.